Hi everyone, today I wanted to give you my secrets on how to get rid of hormonal acne or acne in general. Believe it or not, those pictures are me. Um, the one with the acne and if you can't tell hair loss is me when I was 24 years old. The one on the right is me at 32 and I'm now 33. I just had a baby so I'm a little bit, you know, trying to lose weight but... Anyways, um, I wanted to go over how I got rid of my hormonal acne. Mine was a result of being on birth control for too long. And um, I had to do a lot of research. It was really hard for me because I had never had acne in my life before I was on birth control or, or when I, you know, I was on it. So I had to do a lot of research and I'm a very impatient person. It was very hard for me to read about stuff, use it, and then wait for it to go away. So I got rid of that acne, which was cystic painful acne, after a year and a half. Uh, quick story, I had the acne and I didn't know what to do. When I was on birth control, it was causing me some emotional issues. and. I decided that, you know, I, I wasn't losing weight, I was working out all the time, and I was working two part-time jobs and going to school. I was tired of feeling tired, um, female hormones can do that to you, and that's what birth control is. So I decided to just stop taking it, and I did, and it went from night and day. I could, when I was on it, I could at the drop of a dime and when I was off of it I felt emotionless I think it's because your body is being fed this hormone and when you stop your body is like whoa where are those hormones at and it has to rebalance itself but you never know how long it can take and there can be other factors in why you're getting the acne even though it's hormonal so there's so basically I went and I seen after I tried some stuff, I went and I seen a dermatologist. She was very cold. She asked me if I had any kidney disease or kidney problems in my family. And I said yes, because I do. I have a history of that in my family. Um, anxiety and depression, yes, my family has a history of that. And then she explained to me that it destroys the oil glands that oil causes the acne, the hormonal imbalance causes the uh, oil to produce more and the bacteria thrive in the oil. So she said by using Accutane or Isotetrin it's called now I believe, I could be wrong but I believe that's it, it used to be called Accutane and it's still well known for that. Um, was my second and only other option besides a very strong probiotic, probiotic, antibiotic, which is typically used for, um, what's that called? Staph infection. So, obviously I decided to go on the antibiotic and it was working along with a retinoid cream, which is vitamin A and to an extreme where it rejuvenates the skin underneath, but it can make your skin very sensitive to light. Those two together helped with the acne. However, it completely destroyed my stomach. The antibiotics destroyed all the good bacteria or probiotics in my stomach, and I was constipated, TMI, and I was also bloated beyond belief yeah, bloated more than I have ever been in my life. I couldn't fit into my clothes. I felt uncomfortable at work, at school, no matter where I was. I didn't even want to eat anymore. It was getting terrible and I started getting stomach pains. I knew it was from the antibiotics so I decided to quit that. I quit that. I quit using the retin, retina cream, retinoid cream. Um, and I decided that I was going because I've always been a health nut, I was going to try some herbal remedies and do a lot of research. Well, unfortunately, when I looked it up on YouTube, a lot of the girls had the same horrible acne, but they typically didn't know what to do from the inside. They just knew how to cover it up really well, which was K2 
taking on a lot of makeup, which I don't blame them. I ended up doing that, but I, I figured out ways from the inside to help heal and restore balance in my body, which got rid of my acne, as you can see. So, there are three things to consider when you have acne. Allergy, I do have notes here. Um, is it hormones? Is it from birth control or the birth of a baby? If it's allergies, you want to try to eliminate dairy, shellfish, or nuts, or you need to go speak with your doctor about a possible allergy. Your hormones from like being a teenager or whatever, um, changes in diet can help with that. I have helped a couple of teenagers with that. Birth or, or birth control, so birth of a baby or birth control. It is natural after about, I think, three months to a year after you have a baby for you to have hair loss, and it's typically, like right here, you can't tell because my hair is blonde, but um, a typical hair loss, or you'll notice it all over your head. It can be devastating, but it does go away. However, you can, you know, still help your body in that process and birth control well your body's been fed a bunch of hormones and all of a sudden if you take it away your body's like where the heck are these hormones so it goes into chaos producing oil oil causing the bacteria causing the acne so you need to consider those three things okay a lot of the things I'm going to give advice about will help with this um, supplements and foods. So the first thing is water, 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 water. If you drink soda, cut it out. If you drink energy drinks, limit them. The more you limit them, the better they will be at waking you up. And you can also drink coffee or tea. If you've ever heard of a juicer or even a Nutribullet, you can do smoothies. Um, but mainly a juicer is what I used and you can buy them at the store. I would use carrots, celery, carrots being the main thing that you wanna juice or eat because of the vitamin A, or I should say beta carotene, which can be converted to vitamin A, and that will give you results pretty quickly. I mean, even if you don't have acne, it makes your skin glow. Um, if you don't like eating carrots and you don't have a juicer at Walmart, they do have these big jugs of Bolt House smoothies, and they have one that's just plain carrot. And I buy those for when I'm lazy and don't use my juicer, which is a lot of the time. And you can drink, you know, what it says a serving is every day or more, a little bit more. Um, and that will help. If you do have a juicer, or if you can find it, beet juice. Beets are another one. Beets actually worked better than carrot juice for me. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but whenever I would drink beet juice, I would notice a difference if I drank it in a week. One way to get rid of the taste of the beets, which people complain about a lot, is by using citrus fruits with the beets. So if you got a juicer, juice your beets and juice your oranges, your mandarins, um, pineapple, things like that, kiwi, and a lot of the taste of the beets goes away. But it's a big help, and you want to try to do this every day, every other day, along with drinking lots of water. You can also add into your diet, you know, salads with real green salad and real green or different colored vegetables. Um, or in your juicer, celery cuca or cucumber, different uh, juiceable fruits and vegetables. As far as supplements go, if you are a woman that just had a baby, got off of birth control, or are a teenager, prenatals may help. They contain things that are more, they seem to be a more powerful vitamin because of ba the baby. Um, obviously, you don't want to get pregnant, so be careful. 
but they are very good for helping with hormonal issues when it comes to acne. Try to buy a decent brand, and if you have trouble, remember taking your vitamins. Um, even a lot of good vitam um, vitamins come in gummies now, so just make sure it's a good brand. A multivitamin is a good start, a good quality multivitamin, otherwise you're wasting your money. Do your research. Um, I'll try to find some good ones for you. They do tend to it cost a little more, but it's worth it. A hair vitamin, but you want to be careful. This would probably be just for the women who just had a baby. Um, there's one that I specifically take along with a regular multivitamin or prenatal after my baby. My baby is seven months now. And um, you want to be careful if you know your acne is not from having a baby because it can also it can actually make your acne worse I've taken hair vitamins before when I had regular acne and it did make it worse so you want to take also if you can make sure you don't have an allergy check with your doctor something to cleanse your liver or your whole system your stomach whatever um, for liver dandelion root and milk thistle these work by helping your liver to produce more bile. Bile is a substance that uh, eliminate, helps all the, the toxins get in it, basically, I think. And that I think that would be a good way to explain it. And it eliminates it quicker through the body. It gets your liver going, gets the bile flowing, and eliminates them so that it speeds the process up and helps your liver. Uh, milk thistle has also been known to rejuvenate the liver so any excess hormones that you have that are causing the acne and causing the extra oil that can help your liver process it out fish oil or DHA I prefer DHA but I am taking krill oil mega krill oil with fish right now for my joints um, it's good for your brain it's good for your heart it's good for a lot of things but right now I'm taking it for my joints, not for anything acne related. I would be careful with fish oil because fish oil, some of them can be rancid. Um, their purity can cause acne to get worse. So research your brands before you buy them. And I do not recommend buying a brand off of Amazon unless if you carefully um, check the seller. You know, make sure, check the seller. Because I have bought supplements off of Amazon and I have rarely been satisfied. Uh, so DHA is the main thing that I would recommend. But fish oil is good for you too. Or krell oil. So the next thing is coconut oil, which has multi-purposes. Now, I did try smearing it on my face when I first got acne, thinking that it would heal my skin. Um, smearing it on your face does not do that. Taking it internally, they have pills, or you can buy a jar of it, you know, take a teaspoon of it or less. Um, it's got a lot of things in it that are, it's anti, it kills yeast. I believe it kills bacteria. It's very good for your hair growth. Um, do some research on that and you'll see. I'll get into more of that later. There are some things called adaptogens. And let me read you what I have here on adaptogens. They are herbal pharmaceuticals that counteract the effects of stress in the body. Stress causes physical changes in the body that can harm neurological, endocrine, and immune systems. Adaptogens have stimulant properties that counteract those harmful effects. So basically, um, basically they help to normalize your whole system, every system in your body. Your mind and body are one. Your whole body is connected. Sometimes it doesn't seem or feel like it, but it is. So keep that in mind that an adaptogen helps to regulate and balance everything by getting to the source 
um, it doesn't just target a bacteria or virus like an antibiotic. It actually works with your body as a whole. So some adaptogens include olive leaf extract, uh, garlic, um, what else we got here? Oh, um, chaseberry or vitex, which you have to take about the same time every day. It regulates your period, and that is one thing that also helped me get rid of my acne. It was a little difficult because they say if you really want to see results, you have to take it in the morning, early, like 8 a.m., same time every day. That can be very difficult. Um, even if you don't, though, I think you'll see the benefits of it. CoQ10, uh, stuff like that. Um, another supplement you want to consider taking is probiotics. They have a lot of different brands and a lot of different things now. I wouldn't recommend it in yogurt in case of an allergy. Um, but they do have probiotics. The best kind are the ones that have to be refrigerated because they can't guarantee from the time they put the probiotic in the pill that it's actually going to be there when you leave it sit on your counter for months or for a month. So the best kind to get is actually um, the refrigerated kind. However, I have tried the gummies. They seem to work. My husband is very bad at taking vitamins and stuff, so I do a lot of gummies for him. Found some pretty good brands and it works pretty well. Probiotics basically form a barrier inside of your gut, your gut being your stomach to your intestines, and that barrier prevents yeast and bad bacteria basically killing them off because the probiotics say, I'm taking over this, this is my territory. Okay, so that's how that works. Diatomaceous earth food grade. It's used on farms to kill all kinds of pests on chickens and whatnot, like fleas and stuff. But food grade, you have to be very careful not to smell it or get it in your lungs at all. You put it in water, you drink it. If you do use, I would prefer you do your own research on diatomaceous earth. I'll spell it in the description. Basically, it's a sharp little mollusk or like some kind of fossil that when you drink it, it kills any parasites because everybody has parasites, but there's certain parasites that could be in your body that could be causing you to have acne too. So doing a whole cleanse of your body and putting good foods and water in your body, it all ties together. Garlic, did I mention this? It's an adaptogen, it's an antibiotic. Um, it's my last resort. I did it. It did work. It didn't work as good as beet juice or carrot juice. Those are my top two. So, um, but garlic is very powerful and can be very good for you. One clove a day. It is not fun to eat. Um, the pills might work. I ate a clove of garlic, but I don't like the smell. Same goes for onions. So, the next section which I will put in the description I'm going to put timestamps is cleansing your face now when I first got acne I thought oh scrub it scrub it you know scrub it I'm not scrubbing it good enough something I don't know something's on my face there are mites that can live on your face that can cause acne um, that you want to do research on I don't really know about that this is what I did so when I finally did my research I found that you want to use a gentle cleanser such as Cetaphil. I'll show you the brand that I use and I believe I got it from Walmart. Walmart has some pretty nice kits because you want a non-comedogenic, which means it won't clog your pores, lotion, and you want a really gentle cleanser. And I also like eye creams too because, you know, keep your skin looking nice. So, same as you would use, you know, not scrub your face. You want to be gentle with it. If you were to sit there and scrub your face 
and make your skin all dry thinking that drying out your skin is going to get rid of acne you're completely wrong you're actually making it worse no rubbing alcohol on your face witch hazel pure witch hazel is okay look up what that is um, as an astringent after you clean your face it tightens the pores but it is not alcohol based so if you were to dry up your skin what would happen is you would basically cause your skin to produce more oil it thinks and it your your brain is thinking oh my gosh my skin is so dry I need oil so counterproductive don't do anything to dry your skin like that and use non comedogenic or lotion it will not clog your pores so with that being said um, I will show you what I use now if you have bad acne right now I do recommend Cetaphil their lotion and their cleanser and then if you are a female I apologize about my baby crying if you can hear it this is a mommy channel so um, daddy's taking care of her right now <laughs> okay so let's not get distracted so I also learned how to put on makeup to hide it because it got so bad and my hair was falling out as you can see in that picture I had a hormone problem the acne the only thing I could do was make my eyes look prettier and my hair was falling out there's acne all over my face I was so ashamed I just wanted to hide away but I had to go to work and I had to go to school so basically I learned from the girls on YouTube how to put on makeup and what kind of makeup to use and that makeup included anything that is non comedogenic now, if you need any suggestions, I can give you suggestions. However, there, there are drugstore brands, but I recommend going to Sephora or to Ulta to get um, a recommendation for your skin and to get your skin tight. All right, I had to pause for a second. My husband was trying to take care of the baby and she was screaming like a banshee. Um, my daughter takes after me. This is my karma for all the temper tantrums I threw for my mother when I was a baby for no reason. So anyways, let's get back to this, shall we? <laughs> um, makeup. You can go to Ulta or Sephora and have them help color match, give you advice. Uh, one thing I know is you will need a primer. Primer is puts a barrier between you and your makeup so that it doesn't get into your pores so typically they are non comedogenic but just check and then same goes for you want your concealer and your foundation to be non comedogenic and typically with acne since it's red depending on your skin tone um, this is why I say talk to someone at Ulta or Sephora if you can if not you can message me in the comments and I can try to help you because I have I'm not a makeup expert but I had to learn a lot with acne. <sighs> one second. Okay, one of the mom things again. So, whenever you do these things, it's best if you talk to a professional. And if you have any questions and I'm able to answer them, go ahead and leave it in the comments or you can email me and I believe I have my email up in my description. I'm going to hold this right here. Okay, so one thing is don't expect immediate results. This is something that I have trouble with because I'm a very impatient person. But um, it can take, it might work for you within weeks. It might take a couple months. Me, it took a year and a half because I didn't have the knowledge that I'm giving you. Um, but you just can't guarantee but a healthy lifestyle isn't going to hurt anything overall um, another thing you want to do is you want to work out yes you want to get your blood flowing blood flowing gets oxygen into your lungs gets oxygen into your body oxygen kills bacteria viruses and pathogens so that's gonna help with you know clearing up your skin getting the blood flowing, getting the vitamins to your blood, to your system, all that. 
if you don't already do it, I suggest you start off small and then work your way up. I do have a video about that in my other channel. Maybe I can link that video. One thing I, a uh, couple things left here. Don't wash your hair every day. Use dry shampoo, but don't overdo it with the dry shampoo either. I would say every other day or every two days. This is going, and it's going to, you may think, oh, my hair is going to get so greasy if I don't wash it every day. Once you use the dry shampoo, once you stop washing it every day, the grease actually, you know, your your scalp is like, I don't need to produce as much grease. And it looks like you washed your hair that day. So, um, that takes about a week, I think, for it to change. And another thing is if you're having hair loss from hormonal uh, issues, if you're a female, sorry guys, um, a lot of these things can apply to guys too. If you have any questions, leave them below. But if you're a female, one thing I did, because you've seen how bad my hair got, it grew back. Um, but I used hair extensions. There's clip-in hair extensions. I just bought them from Sally's, but now I would probably recommend a, brand, a different brand, a couple different brands, even Amazon brands if you're careful. Um, one of the brands I'll recommend right now is Glam Seamless. They're clip-in hair extensions. I can do a video on that. Otherwise, you can look it up, but... Um, you know, the hair loss was really devastating for me because I always had long, beautiful blonde hair. And it was all caused by this hormonal issue. And as soon as I got that fixed, my hair started growing again. It grew thicker. Once I had my baby, it grew thicker and it grew longer. And sometimes I'll admit, like when the hairdresser messed my hair up when I was getting highlights and lowlights, which is why I do my own hair now maybe needs a little bit of toner but um which is why um I've worn hair extensions because I had to cut my hair short because the um hairstylist bless her heart she messed up my hair um but there's no shame in it and it's actually really popular now the person I heard about it from had super thick hair and it was my friend's sister, and she was like, oh yeah, check it out, I wear hair extensions. And she's like, I can help you pick them out. Hair extensions, when you pick them out, can be very hard because if you don't get the right color, you cannot bleach them, but you can dye them darker. Um, but they gave me a sense of confidence. Just don't sleep with them in because you don't want to pull out any more hair than what you're already losing from hormone loss. And if you're worried about, oh, is the guy going to, you know, freak out or think I'm weird or whatever. The only, I've never, when I did wear hair extensions or even if I just, you know, do a few clip-ins to add an extra volume, ba ba boom You know, I've never had a guy and I dated all the way up until I was 31, until I met my husband, so... And my husband don't care. Um, kind of like the whole fake boob things. Sorry, but the only what people who really care are other females who don't wear them because they're jealous that you're doing something to make yourself feel better about yourself. Men don't really care. I mean, I've dated quite a few guys, just dated, you know, before when I was single, bachelorette, independent. And even my husband, men don't really care, honestly. Um, they don't like it when you wear too much makeup. You know, met different men, different th ideas, but I've never had a guy make a rude comment towards me when I say I wear hair extensions. Even when my hair was like this short. Mm -mm. So don't be ashamed. The only people that might hate on you is other women, and a lot of women, even with the thickest of hair, wear hair extensions. There's not just clip-ins, there's also tape-ins, beaded rows, all kinds. So, you know, if you really need to, you can wear hair extensions. I recommend Glam Seamless, and I'll put the link for that below, just in case if you want to try it. And um, you can always go to Sally's, but be careful with those, because they're not good at helping you color match. 
and they're non-refundable and they're like a hundred something but they can last you a long time just don't sleep with them in okay so then that is about all I have and I'm going to make another really important point exercise water no soda if you can get a juicer even a cheap one from Walmart beet juice with some oranges or just plain beet juice carrots by eating them a serving or two a day or carrot juice and you can buy organic carrot juice by the jug which I will put a picture at the end of the things that I use and scalp oiling I forgot about that one uh, scalp oiling is all over the internet I can make a video on that um, you basically take carrier oil such as olive oil or coconut oil add some essential oil like mint rosemary um, eucalyptus and you give yourself or have someone else give you a nice scalp massage and it feels really good and it stimulates hair growth especially if you're experiencing hair loss so you can do that and I also have the stuff that I actually did buy on Amazon that I tried on my husband because my husband shaves his head because he's bald but he's got you know some hair started growing here when I started applying that particular product and scalp oiling him so um, I forgot that part I'm sorry this video is all over the place but I will try to make it more uniform in the description basically beet juice water carrots carrot juice uh, clean your liver and exercise start off with that or at least two of them and see how that goes give it a little bit of time don't rush yourself don't stress yourself out if your appearance is bothering you and you're a female you can try makeup and hair extensions if you're a guy you know just focus on your haircut your clothing style do something to distract from the acne and have confidence confidence is a really big thing with guys don't matter if you you can shave off one eyebrow but people might look at you funny but if you walk around with confidence kind of like how my husband is but he's like six foot three then you're gonna end up you know nobody probably might they'll notice that eyebrow but they'll think it's a fashion so just confidence okay all right, so I'm gonna end this video and I'm gonna show some pictures of what I use. Um, and that's about it. All right, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or feel free to email me. I'll leave my Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram, Trucker Chick SHK. And I also have a, what's that called, TikTok. Um, I'm a goofy person, but if you wanna add me, you can. All right, bye.